the electricity. Uh, it seems people don't use these phones. The phones are there. In 1986, Uganda had 28,000 telephone lines. We now have 23 million telephone lines. I don't know how many are in Rwanda. But people don't use them to telephone. You find the minister finds a lot of difficulty to telephone another minister in Rwanda. Say, please, this one. <laughs> So I think we need some course in, in telephony. <laughs> so, so that th things are, are, are very simple. If there is something here, uh, somebody is saying this, uh, you know, like these people uh, who may have done this here, done that there, why not uh, consult by telephony? Recently, you remember the girl who was uh, kidnapped and killed. One of the suspects is in uh, South Africa. Uh, I picked a telephone and I rang President Ramaphosa myself because it had come to, uh, and action was taken. So even, even, even in these cases, the people involved, if they could only work closely uh, I think a lot of uh, confusion would be avoided. Be because there is nothing su substantive. It, w when I listened carefully, w when I met His Excellency in Addis Ababa, he gave me some facts which I followed up. And I've now been able to report to him uh, on each one of them. So what is the problem? If, if something has happened, what are the facts? discuss what is the truth. If there is merit, then you can take a legal action. Like for instance, some, some weeks ago, month, weeks, there was a group which was being suspected of uh, being recruited to go through Tanzania to some place, to Burundi, I think, or Banyarwanda, who, who said they were going for uh, missionary work, for church work, but apparently, when they were interrogated, it was found that the work was not exactly religious for something else. But this came through cooperation, through just contact. That's what I, I, I would want to comment on, on, on that one. But, but there is no fundamental conflict between Rwanda and Uganda. I don't see it. We don't even have a border problem. A border question. At least with Kenya, you can say with Kenya, there is, there is a Mijingo, <laughs> which we have not resolved, where we need to survey. With Tanzania, there is the issue of one latitude south. The border of Uganda and Tanzania is supposed to be at one latitude south. But when, when, when they measured in, 20, in 1916, they put it short of that. So that issue is, is there. We have, we have never resolved it. With, with, with Congo, there is Rukwanzi Island, that island called Rukwanzi. But with Rwanda, there is nothing. There is no, no, no issue, really, in my opinion. I don't see it. Don't say something. Well, I President, you have said everything. I don't think I, I would uh, add anything to that other than uh, what you emphasized uh, in terms of cooperation, people working together um, more deeply and uh, bringing facts uh, to be based on to take uh, the right decisions. I don't think there is anything else I can add. Yeah, with uh, Mr. Gashegu, New yeah. Times. Thank you. <clears throat> My question goes to both your excellencies. My name is Gashegu Muramira. I write for the New Times, a Rwandan daily paper. <clears throat> My question is basically on private sector engagement by both Rwanda and Uganda. There has to be much private sector engagement, uh, both pushed at heads of state level, 
Remember, we used to have the Uganda Rwanda business forums, which, which have died out. We no longer have them. And there is a gap in the push to have the private sector engage in both countries. For example, there is need for, for investment in higher education by the private sector, and we don't see this push coming up. How far have you gone in those efforts? Thank you. Well, uh, I think we have uh, ourselves, all of us, to blame for, for not making a thing like that that is useful work for us. So uh, maybe I would suggest uh, what the Foreign Affairs Minister said, uh, Mr. Kutesa, about the Permanent Joint Commission. Why wouldn't they help us speed up that? With, with the private sector, I, I don't see why there should be any problem at all. Uh, so it's a question, well, the private sector, people themselves need to uh, really uh, 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 reactivate uh, whatever was working and is no longer working. And uh, for us, on our side, in my view, we can give them the political support required for, for that to, to be accelerated. Mm. That's exactly it. B because the interests are clear, there are things uh, Rwanda produces which we need here. Like, for instance, we, we have uh, a huge iron ore deposit in, uh, in, in Kavari, Muko. But in order to remove oxygen from iron ore, you need gas. We have discovered oil in Lake Albert and it has got some gas, but the gas is not too much. It is not, it's not like Tanzania, which has got a lot of gas, or like Rwanda, which has got gas from Lake Chivu. And in any case, Lake, Lake Chivu is nearer Muko than, for instance, Albert. If you had to pipe, to pipe gas from Lake Albert, Assuming the gas was enough, but we don't have uh, enough gas. What we have is uh, uh, may not be enough to do, to do also the the, the 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 processing of steel. So uh, the the people of industry, this should be part of the plan. How are you going to develop the steel industry? We are now building these huge railways all over the place. We are building the power stations, like the ones we are building at Karuma, and the steel is being imported. It would have been better to use our steel here, because the steel we are having, this one of recycled, is not good for dams, is not good for, for the railway, is not good for high-rise buildings. And we are, we are going to build more dams, more more high-rise buildings, and we, we have this resource here. Rwanda has got gas, we have got iron ore. So why should we import uh, steel from uh, Singapore, from what? Mm -hmm. You find that the, the freight alone, the transport alone is, is almost equal to the value of, uh, of the product. The what we call uh, Ugaha, <laughs> The flute. Mm -hmm. oh, this is another one. Oh. Thank you, Excellence. So there's what we call in Isinya Rwanda, Guhaha. Banyankole call it Okshaka. So 
Oksaka, Oksaka to buy from Oksaka, to buy something from other people. You find we are guhaha, things we, we shouldn't guhaha, we should do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh. And the closer we work together, the better. So the Ministry of Planning should do, do, develop a project with, the, with Rwanda to, to, to see how, how to build. We are building the steel industry in the east, in Tororo using the iron ore there. But how about this side? Uh, Muko, together with uh, Lake Chivu. Can we have two questions and then we'll go to... Yeah. <coughs> uh, Mr. Mohammed. Thank you. My name is Gaius Mohammed. I work with Chimp Reports here in Uganda. My question goes to President Kagame. There are reports that uh, some Ugandans living in Rwanda are having their contracts, employment contracts terminated under mysterious circumstances. That they are verbally told that maybe next month we don't expect you to be here. So how do you respond to that? Thank you. Well, that, that is... Uh Similar to the question that was asked earlier, there are so many things that are said, uh, sometimes uh, out of context or reported out of context. So what I think we have agreed to do and that was stated was for the concerned uh, institutions on both sides uh, working together, they can get to the bottom of uh, any matter that uh, has been risen and I think we could get uh, the right information in which case you, 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 you will get to know the details. Thank you. Uh, lastly, yes. Mr. Kaira. Uh, Your Excellencies, my question regards the uh, situation, the security situation in the DRC. As Chairman of AU, Your Excellency Paul Kagame, and Your Excellency President Museveni, what are you doing to deal with the situation in, in the DRC? Because right now, huge influx of refugees is coming in, and I think for the security of these two countries as well, there might be an issue. Naomba tafadhali kama itawezekana tupate na jibu la kiswahili katika jibu hilo. Nashukuru. <laughs> the, the, the chairman of the African Union. Oh, well, I say something, but not in Kiswahili. I want to uh, to be accurate in what I'm saying. I don't want to be faulted uh, for saying something I didn't intend to to say. If I were to attempt a Kiswahili, uh, DRC is is of uh, big concern uh, to to everyone. Uh, starting with the neighbors and uh, particularly Uganda uh, which has already had uh, uh, spillovers from that situation uh, affecting uh, Uganda having uh, hundreds of thousands or maybe there will be more even more tomorrow so that's a, that's a big problem uh, and I'm sure the other neighbors of, of uh, DRC are being affected in uh, similar uh, or different ways, but everyone is affected. But there is even the Congolese themselves. I'm sure a situation like that that, has, uh, that produces so many refugees uh, in such a short time, uh, and the problems that have also been there for many years, that's why the UN has been present in Congo for now a couple of decades. We have uh, MONUSCO there, a UN force. It's because of problems that were there. Now what we are seeing today is not uh, an end to those problems, but rather more problems coming up. So definitely, these are matters of uh, great concern to neighbors, to the region, and uh, 
to the international community, the wider, the wider international community beyond uh, the region and uh, and others. So we are trying to see, and we we should maybe be moving faster or, or doing more uh, fast as a region. Can we uh, find a way of doing something that would be relevant to addressing the problems in the, in the DRC as we know them, uh, that we, we, we intend to do that. We are already talking, in fact, it was part of the discussion we had with President Museveni. Uh, we need to work with the UN that is already present in the, to tell us uh, beyond what they are already doing and have been doing for so many years that uh, has not produced uh, good results. Uh, what else do they intend to do or what can we do together uh, to, to make sure that uh, the situation in, in, in Congo is stabilized uh, to stop producing more refugees or displacement, the displacements of, of people in such numbers, and affecting the security of neighboring countries. Uh, while we say that, we talk about neighboring countries, and but of course we always have to bear in mind as well the, the Congolese themselves must be suffering a lot, a lot, so there's something we can do. So that, that for now, that is what I can say, that, that people are very aware, very conscious of what it needs, uh, that there is a, a sense of urgency in finding uh, what can be done to try and, uh, and deal with the matter of DRC. Ndavuga <laughs> Nga chairman wa African Union, wa avuze. What the chairman has said is also what I say. Nasema, manena ambaya nafanana na ya mwenye kitu wa African Union, sina neno lingene tafauti, tunajadiana, sisu wote, lakini Kongo, ni swala mbalo luko na kuna watu wenga mbao wa meingia kwenye swala hilo kwa muda mbrefu kwa miaka mingi sasa umoja wa mataifa umekua kwenye mgogoro wa kongo kwa hiyo ni wajibu wao kuongoza kutafuta suruhisho kwa hiyo mgogoro <coughs> lakini sasa hivi jambo ambalo limeongezeka ni jambo la wakimbizi wakimbizi ambao wanaingia hapa ni wengi sana sio idadi kidogo kama ingekuwa idadi kidogo labda tungenyamaza lakini kama wakimbizi wa Kongo wamefika laki nne na wanaongezeka wakimbizi wa Sudan ya Kusini milioni moja na laki moja eh hao ambao wakimbizi ambao wamekuja wamekuja zaidi peke yao lakini wakimbizi wa, wengine wakija na ngombe tutaziweka wapi <laughs> so mwenyekiti yuko hapa tumezungumza na tutaongea na watu wengine wa, wa, ambao wanaoshughulika lakini umoja wa mataifa sasa ndiyo eh, ndiyo kwenye mstari wa mbele kwenye hili shida kwa sababu ni shida ambayo wame wamesimamia kwa muda mrefu eh. the UN have, have been supervising that problem for a long time since the death of Rumumba 1960 the UN has been in Congo almost continuously 58 years now. Yeah. 
Dakle tutaongea nao. But nzuri sisi wote tunaongea Kiingereza, tunajua lugha zao. <laughs> Asante sana. We thank their excellencies and please both delegations join them for lunch across uh, the... how, how about how about this Ruma Monga? They should also get something to eat. <laughs> Ruma Monga is also must not stop. I think they should be catered differently. There is already some facility. Thank you.